Hello everyone! Today's video, we will be discussing Chapter 8, Activity-Based Costing. So our first reporters will be Mr. Kenny Kenny, Ms. Sharami Pundang, and Ms. Idolin Tanyo. So good day everyone, so we will be the first reporter of the class. By the way, my name is Kenny O'Kenny and I'll be tackling the introduction of activity-based costing. So in this chapter, we will understand the concept of activity-based costing, which has been embraced to a wide variety of organizations. And it also primarily focuses on its applications to show how activity-based costing can be used to aid um, decisions that are affects fixed costs and as well as variable costs. So let me give you a brief explanation on what ABC or activity-based costing is. So it offers a powerful approach to cost analysis, providing more accurate understanding of cost allocation and cost drivers. By unveiling the power of ABC or activity-based costing, organization can make more informed financial decisions and achieve better costing management. So most organizations that use activity-based costing have two costing systems. These are official costing system and activity-based costing system. So what is official costing system? So it is used for external financial reporting, while activity-based costing system is used for internal decision-making and as well as managers' activities. So don't worry guys if short tara ang explanation dire kay basically this is just a introduction and matakaw pa ni si Jess sa mga musunod ng chapters. So that's all for me guys. Thank you! Good day! I'm Sharmi Pundang and I'm going to talk about the overview of activity-based costing. So the first learning objective of this chapter is to understand activity-based costing and how it differs from a traditional costing system. So after watching this chapter's video, we should be able to understand what activity-based costing is and we can differentiate activity-based costing from a traditional costing system. An overview of activity-based costing. Traditional absorption costing is designed to provide data for external financial reports. In contrast, activity-based costing is designed to be used for internal decision-making. So in addition, traditional absorption costing emphasizes direct cost, such as direct labor and direct materials. On the other hand, ABC or activity-based costing emphasizes indirect cost, such as as overhead expenses and support costs. So in short, traditional absorption costing is for external financial reports and activity-based costing is for internal decision making. As a consequence, activity-based costing differs from traditional cost accounting in three ways. So these are the three ways. In activity-based costing, Non-manufacturing as well as manufacturing costs may be assigned to products, but only on a cost and effect basis. Second, some manufacturing costs may be excluded from product cost. And third, numerous overhead cost pools are used, each of which is allocated to products and other cost objects using its own unique measure of activity. In Business Shedding light on product probability. Rich Hold Incorporation. One of the world's lending supply of synthetic materials adapt activity based costing to help shade light on probability of its virus product. So, ang Rich Hold is osa si sa pinaka nangunguna nga kampanya nga mibalhin sa activity-based costing para mas masabda nila ang probability sa lain-lain nila nga product. The ABC system uses four additional activity measures. First is pre-process preparation hours. Second, think tank hours. Third, filtration hours. Fourth, waste disposal cost per batch to assign costs to products. Richard has ruled out 
ABC to all 19 of its North American plants because the management teams believe that ABC helped improve the company. Company's capacity management, cycles time, value added pricing decision, and analysis of product probability. So the next lesson that we'll talk about is how costs are treated under activity-based costing. Here are the reporters for today's discussion. Ms. Trixie Hope Maribao, Ms. Ashley Katie Valle, and Ms. Laika Krisha C. Non-manufacturing costs and activity-based costing. Manufacturing costs are assigned to product to emphasize direct association with product activities, including direct labor and materials. Selling, general and administrative expenses are treated as period costs, recognized for supporting overall business operations with a specific time frame. Non-manufacturing costs are typically not assigned to production in traditional cost accounting due to their characterization as period costs. This operation simplifies accounting processes aligning with historical conventions and the focus on manufacturing efficiency. The traditional approach isolates manufacturing costs to analyze and optimize production. So in manufacturing costs and activity-based costing, in traditional cost accounting, all manufacturing costs, including those not directly caused by specific products, are assigned to products. This practice often leads to the allocation of costs that may not be influenced by the production of particular items, such as allocating a portion of the factory security guard's wages to each product regardless of its impact on production. Cost pools, allocation basis, and activity-based costing. In activity-based costing, an activity refers to event that leads to the use of overhead resources. These activities can range from manufacturing processes to administrative tasks. To track and allocate costs, ABC uses cost pools, which are like buckets, collecting costs associated with a specific activity measure. Each pool corresponds to a distinct activity, enabling a more precise distribution of, over, of overhead expenses based on the actual activities driving those costs. Activity measure serves an allocation base for distributing cost. It quantifies the level of particular activity that drives the consumption of resources. The third cost driver is intermediately used to refer to an activity measure because the chosen measure should essentially drive or influence the cost to being allocated. The goal is to link cost accurately to the specific activities that generate them, enhancing the precision of cost assignments in contrast to traditional costing methods. There are two most common types of activity, the transaction driver and duration drivers. So the transaction drivers are simply counts of the number of times an activity occurs such as the number of bills sent out to customer. While the duration driver measure the amount of time required to perform an activity such as the time spent preparing individual bills for customers. So in general, and um, duration drivers um, must, accurate, must accurate and measure the resource consumption kaysa sa transaction driver. Traditional cost system rely exclusively on allocation basis that are driven by the volume of production. On the other hand, activity-based costing defines five levels of activity. So this level describes as follows. The first one is unit level activities. So imagine you are baking cookies. So it is the cost of ingredients and baking time for each cookie. So this is about also the cost of making each individual item. The second activity would be the batch level activities. So think of making a batch of cookies. So the cost here includes things like setting up the kitchen, preparing the ingredients, and the time spent on the entire batch. The next would be product level activities. Now, expand to the entire type of cookies you are making. If you sp spend time designing a new cookie or advertising whole line of cookies, so those costs are product level activities. The fourth one is customer level activities. If you are customizing cookies for a specific customer or spending time on customer service, 
those costs are fall into customer level. The last one is organization sustaining activities. Finally, some costs are necessary for your entire baking operation, not just for specific cookies or customer. So this organization sustaining activities is like general administrative costs or maintaining your kitchen space. Here are the reporters for today's discussion. Ms. Janelina Chavez, Ms. Rezoker Aib Kaslau, and Ms. Crystal May Benetes. The next topic is designing an ABC system. Activity-based costing is a valuable tool for organizations to gain a more accurate understanding of their costs, enhance decision-making processes, and improve overall efficiency and profitability. Designing an ABC system enhances the precision of cost allocation, leading to more informed business decisions and improved understanding of profitability at the products or service level. There are three essential characteristics of a successful activity-based costing implementation. First, top managers should strongly support the ABC implementation because their leadership is instrumental para ma-motivate ang mga employees to embrace the need to change. Second, top managers should ensure that ABC data is linked on how people are evaluated and rewarded. If employees continue to be evaluated and rewarded using the traditional cost data, they will quickly get the message that ABC is not important and they will abandon it. Third, a cross-functional team should be created to design and implement ABC system. The team should include representatives that will use ABC data such as the production, marketing, engineering, and accounting departments. These cross-functional employees possess intimate knowledge of many parts of an organization's operations that is necessary for designing an effective ABC system. Top managers should support activity-based costing implementation because it provides more accurate insights into the true cost of products or services. This helps in making informed strategic decisions, improving resource allocation, and enhancing overall organizational efficiency. The impact of top managers leading the implementation of an activity-based costing system is significant. Their involvement contributes to strategic alignment, commitment of resources, cultural change, and effective communication, ultimately enhancing the likelihood of a successful and beneficial implementation. Gaining market share without considering the cost implications may lead to a quantity rather than quality. ABC helps in maintaining a balance by considering the true cost associated with each activity and ensuring that quality is not compromised. Well, my well, market share is a valuable metric Sustain success requires profitability and efficient resource management. ABC contributes to the long-term sustainability of a business by ensuring a focus on activities that contribute to profitability and strategic objectives.
Good day everyone, my name is Rachel Karay Bukaslaw and I'm to discuss the first step for implementing activity-based costing. The first step for implementing activity-based costing is define activities, activity cost pool, and activity measures. The first major step in implementing the ABC system is to identify the activities that will form the foundation for the system. This step can be difficult, time-consuming, and involves a great deal of judgment. So, ang common procedure sa step 1 is ang um, individuals nga na as a ABC implementation team mag-interview mag sila og tao nga nag-work sa overhead departments and ask them nga i-describe ang ilang major activities. So, kani siya nga procedure mag ni siya to a very long list of activities. The length of such list of activities uh, nag-possess siya of problem. Pero, the greater the number of activities nga mag nga ma track sa ABC system the more nga mas accurate ang cost that are likely to be on the other hand a complex system involving large number of activities is costly to design implement maintain and use so ang original lengthy list of activities is ma reduce na siya to a handful by combining similar activities for example several actions may be involved in handling and moving raw materials from receiving raw materials on the loading dock to sorting them into the appropriate bins in the storeroom. So, kato si Jang uh, activities, pwede na si Jang i-combine into a single activity na itong tawag material handling. When combining activities in an ABC system, activities should be grouped together at the appropriate level. Like ang batch level activities should not be combined with unit level activities or ang product level activities with batch level activities and so on. In general, mas best nga, mas nga i-combine na to ang mga activities that are highly correlated with each other within a level. For example, sa combining activities. Ang number of customers order received is likely to be highly correlated with the number of completed customer order shipped. So, ang katong duha ka batch level activities ang receiving one shipping orders, pwede nito siya i-combine with little loss of accuracy. Let's now tackle activity cost pool. Activity cost pool is an aggregate of all the costs associated with performing an, a particular business task, such as making a particular product. So, dito yung chart dito at makita sa list sa uh, activity cost pool, na dito ang customer orders, product design, order size, customer relations, and others. Then, sa pika side, at makita ang uh, measures sa mga activities or ang activity measures. First is customer orders. Customer orders assign all cost of resources that are consumed by taking and processing customer orders. Sa so customer orders, na include dira ang cost of processing paperwork and any cost na involved in setting up machine for specific orders. So activity measure ani nga cost pool is ang number sa orders nga na receive sa customers. Ang kanin siya nga activity, batch level activity ni siya because ang each order nag-generate siya og work na nag-occur regardless of whether ang order is for one unit or a thousand unit. Next is product design. Product design assign all cost resources consumed by designing products. Ang activity measure and product design is number of product design. So, ang kanin product design, product level activity ni because ang amount sa design work on a new product is what nakadepende sa number of units ultimately ordered or batches ultimately run. The order size cost pool will be assigned all cost resources consumed as a consequence of units produced including the costs of miscellaneous factory supplies, power to run machines, and some equipment depreciation. This is a unit level activity because each unit requires some of these resources. The activity measure for this cost pool is machine hours. So, ang order size cost pool, hindi na ito makita o pila ang mga nagasto sa mga supply sa pabrika, machines, o uban pangagipanggastusan sa usaka company. 
the customer relations cost pool will be assigned all costs associated with maintaining relations with customers, including the cost of sales calls and the cost of enter training customers. The activity measure for this cost pool is the number of customers the company has on its active customer list. The customer relations cost pool represents a customer level activity. Importante ang customer relations cost pool kay diri makita if trustworthy pa jud ang usa ka company and dapat na ma-maintain pa ang relationship sa customer kay usa pud ni siya makatabang para mas mudaghan pa ang tao nga mosalig sa usa ka kumpanya. So diri sa customer relations nakalista ang activity sa usa ka customer. The other cost pool will be assigned all overhead costs that are not associated with customer orders, product design, desire of the orders, or customer relations. So, this cost mainly consists of organization sustaining costs and the cost of unused ideal capacity. This cost will not be assigned to products became they represent resources that are not consumed by products. So, there is other cost pool. Ilista gihapon ang mga orders sa customer o design sa ilang product bisan pa o gawa na na siya na associate sa ilang overhead cost. It is unlikely that any other company would use exactly the same activity cost pools and activity measures that were selected by Classic Brass. So because of the amount of judgment involved, the number and definitions of the activity cost pools and activity measures used by companies vary considerably. Here's the reporter of Mechanics of ABC, Ms. Mary Chris Kamahalan, Ms. Mary Cindy Quintayo, and Ms. Jovic Sorisoroy, their editor. The Mechanics of Activity-Based Costing So first is, what is Activity-Based Costing? So Activity-Based Costing is a cost method that allocates costs based on activities and processes that involve in producing goods and services and assign the activity costs posed to products by means of cost drivers. So, natin duha ka word nga need ba sabdan para mas dali na ito compute ang usa ka problem, which is the cost driver and the activity cost post. So, first is the cost driver. So, ang cost driver is a factor that causes changes in the cost pool for particular activity. It is used a basis for cost allocation that any factor of activity that has a direct cost and effect relationship. Trias activity cost post, dili na katigom ang tanang cost sa product before ni mo si Jama allocate. This helps organization better understand and manage costs contributing to more infos. Let's proceed sa example problem. So, ari is gihatagan taog during the period. So, the direct, direct materials is 495,000. So, now for the overhead, these are the activity cost posts. So, in this problem, assume that number one, it produced and sold 2,500 units each of all products. Number two, the selling prices in product X is 400, in product Y, 410 pesos, and product Z is 405. In number three, no beginning and ending work in process and finished goods inventory. So, ang requirements in ani is we should compute the product cost and gross profit under the activity based costing. So, there is a detailed cost information provided. Gi butang din ah, ang pagka um, kan ay why ang kaning mga number of machine setups na yung 100. Step 1 in activity based costing. Step 1 is calculate for the overhead rates per activity based on cost drivers. Step 2. Allocate overhead based on activity using the rate calculated. Remember na ang atong pull rate and setup is 3,000. So, simply multiply residue sa assigned number of setup per product. Step 3. Compute the total manufacturing cost for each product. Direct materials, direct labor, and factory overhead. 
Step 4. Compute for the gross profit. In computing the gross profit, sales and cost of goods sold should be subtracted. Fit of using activity-based costing. Provide realistic cost of manufacturing specific products. Allocates manufacturing overhead more accurately to product and process the use the activity. Identifies inefficient process and target of improvements. Determines product profit margin more pricely. Discover which process have necessary and wasted, wasted cost. Offers better understanding and justification of cost and manufacturing overhead. Hi everyone! We're going to tackle comparison of traditional costing and activity-based costing. The reporters of today's discussion is Ms. Rina Kathleen Gloria, Marinel Q. Paraiso, and Ms. Princess K. A. Ligato. The first topic that we will discuss is traditional costing. So first, we will discuss its definition, second, its advantages, and lastly, we will demonstrate a problem-solving activity. Is traditional costing. Traditional costing is a method used to assign cost to products based on the volume of resources that is consumed, such as labor hours and machine hours. It aims to determine the cost of producing or providing a service by, by allocating indirect cost to products based on the volumes, volume of the resources that is consumed. So how do we calculate traditional costing? So the first step is identify direct cost. Second, identify indirect cost. Third, determine the cost driver. Fourth, calculate the overhead rate which is predetermined na si ja. Next is allocate indirect cost to products and lastly, calculate the total cost. So what are the advantages of traditional costing? So first, it is simple method allocation, less expensive to implement, quick method allocation, applicable to many businesses, and it is easier to understand. So now we're going to demonstrate a problem solving activity. Here is question number one about the Gadget Go produces three products A and B and C, which is we are required to calculate the full cost per unit for products A, B, and C under traditional absorption cost costing using direct labor hours as basis for appointment, and calculate the full cost per unit of each product using activity based costing. So using traditional costing method, first the first thing we need to do is to get the total annual overhead cost, which is atong i-add ang, ang machine setup cost, machine running cost, procurement cost, and delivery goods. After na to makuha ang ilang sum, we will proceed to overhead absorption rate, which is atong i-add ang A, B, and C, ilang production volumes, labor hour per unit, and total labor hours. Then, Atong i-divide ang overhead absorption rate to sa atong nakuha ang total gaina, which is 195,270 divided by 6,900, we will get 28.30 per hour. So we'll proceed to the cost per unit. First, we will list, the, we will list A, B, and C, and ato silang i-add ang raw materials, direct labor, and overhead to get the full cost per unit. So now we will have Ms. Marinel Paraiso for the discussion of activity-based costing. Activity-based costing is a costing method that is designed to provide managers with cost information for strategic and other decisions that potentially affect capacity and therefore fixed as well as variable cost. ABC emphasizes indirect cost such as overhead expense, and support cost. Activity-based costing is a system na magamit nimo 
para ma-allocate ang production cost and more accurate siya and comprehensive view of cost behavior. Ang ABC is more complicated siya than traditional costing since ang iyong process kay need siya i-specific. For the problem solving, we'll be using the same problem we solved earlier, but we're going to solve by using activity-based costing. So let's have Ms. Marinelle Paraiso to explain the equation. Using activity-based costing, so atas ang total ang cost pool, so na atay total dira ang 195,270. Then, ang cost drivers na ito na atay 36, 32,194 o 140 deliveries. Para makuha na to ang cost permission setup at itong i-divide ang cost pools sa cost drivers. So, same process ra para sa per machine or per order or per delivery. So, na total sa machine setup, 737.50 sa machine per sa machine R 2.0685 sa per order na atay 510.6383 og sa cost per delivery na atay 388 Here are the reporters for today's discussion Miss Aranisa Aninipot Miss Diane Heraldo and Miss Angeline Abundo Good day everyone so the topic that we'll be discussing is the targeting process improvements Activity-based costing plus activity-based management. Activity-based costing can be used to identify areas that would benefit from process improvements. Indeed, managers often cite this is the major benefit of activity-based costing. Activity-based management is used in conjunction with activity-based costing to improve processes and reduce cost. Activity-based management is used in organization as diverse as manufacturing companies, hospitals, and the U.S. Marine Corporation. So, here are the steps in implementing a target cost approach. First, is to determine the market price. The market price is the current price at which an asset or service can be bought or sold. The market price of an asset or service is determined by the forces of supply and demand. The price at which the quantity supplied equals the quantity demanded is the market price. The second one is to determine the desired profit. Desired profit margin is the amount of profit that the company wants to make on the product or service. The next step is to calculate the target cost at market price less desired profit. The target cost is the maximum amount that a company is willing to spend on a product, project, or service. The target cost is calculated by subtracting the desired profit margin from the target selling price. The fourth one is use value engineering to identify ways to reduce product cost. It is used to analyze a service, system, or product to determine the best way to manage the important functions while reducing the cost. Value engineering encourages using alternative methods and materials that are less expensive and do not lower the functionality of the system, service, or product. So what is benchmarking? Benchmarking is used to determine which features give the firm a competitive advantage. Its objective is to come up with an overall bundle of features for a product that achieve the desired balance of meeting consumer preferences while keeping the costs below the target level. Benchmarking examples are instances of companies or departments measuring the results against other departments or others in their industry, a practice that can help them understand how they perform compared to their competitors. Theory of Constraints The Theory of Constraints, or TLC, is a man management philosophy that focuses on identifying and elevating constraints that limit an organization's ability to achieve its goals. It is also a technique used to improve the speed in the manufacturing. It emphasizes the improvement of throughout the overall rate of manufacturing output by removing or reducing the bottlenecks in the production process that slow the rate of output. Here are the five steps of TLC. First, we need to identify the constraints. Recognize the element in the system that is limits its ability to achieve the higher performance. The second step is to exploit the constraints. Make the best use of the constraints capacity by ensuring it operates efficiently and is not underutilized. The third, the third step is to subordinate everything to the constraints. Align all other process, processes and activities with the constraints to ensure they support. The fourth step is elevate constraints. Invest in ways to increase the capacity or efficiency to the constraint to allow for higher output. And the last step is repeat the process. 
Once the initial constraints is addressed, go back to the step 1 and identify the next constraint in the system. Continue the cycle to improve the overall system performance. These steps form a continuous improvement, loop, aim, and optimizing system rather than just individual components. So I have here an example of targeting process improvement. XYZ Corporation, a manufacturing company, analyzes its assembly process using activity-based costing to identify areas of improvement. Here are the identified activities, setup time, actual assembly time, quality checks, and packaging. And for the assigned cost, setup time will be $5,000 for the live or $20,000 for the equipment, equipment depreciation, and $5,000 for the setup materials. The actual assembly time will be $80,000. For quality checks, $15,000. And the last one is the packaging for $25,000. Compute activity rates. Setup time activity rates, $50,000 plus $20,000 plus $5,000 divide 500 setups equals $150 per setups. Actual assembly time activity rates 80,000 divide 5,000 units equals 16 per units. Quality check activity rates 15,000 divide 500 checks equals 30 per checks. Packaging activity rate 25,000 divide 5,000 equals 5 per unit. Solution XYZ Corporation invests 100,000 in advanced setup technologies that reduce setup times by 30%. Reduce cost. Review setup time cost equals 500 setups times $150 equals $75,000. New setup time cost 500 setup times 105 equals 52,500. Cost reduction, 75,000 minus 52 equals 22,500. So increase efficiency. Previous production output equals 5,000 units. New production output, 50 units plus 30% of 5,000 5, units equals 6,500 units. Here are the reporters of ABC and external reports. Ms. Chandra Potana, Ms. Sheena Carnites, and Ms. Apple Laroa. ABC Activity-Based Costing and External Reports Although activity-based costing generally provides more accurate product costs than traditional costing methods, it is infrequently used for external reports for a number of reasons. First, external reports are less detailed than internal reports prepared for decision-making. On the external reports, individual product costs are not reported. Cost of goods sold and inventory valuations are disclosed, but they are not broken down by product. If some products are undercosted and some are overcosted, the errors tend to offset each other when the product costs are added together. Generally, internal reports tend to be more detailed in order to provide management with enough information to help in the decision-making process. They are designed to be viewed only by individuals within the organization, whereas external reports can be accessed by any person outside the organization. Second, it is often very difficult to make changes in a company's accounting system. The official cost accounting systems in most large companies are usually embedded in complex computer programs that have been modified in-house over the course of many years. It is extremely difficult to make changes in such computer programs without causing numerous bugs. Changing accounting systems is costly and very time-consuming. Third, an ABC system does not conform to generally accepted accounting principles or the GAAP. As discussed in Chapter 2, product costs computed for external report must include all of the manufacturing costs and only manufacturing costs. But in an ABC system, as described in this chapter, product costs exclude some manufacturing costs and include some non-manufacturing costs. It is possible to adjust the ABC data at the end of the period to conform to GAAP, but that requires more work. 
The ABC system ensure deviates from generally accepted accounting principles in terms of product cost for external reports. In GAAP, product cost for external reporting should encompasses all manufacturing costs exclusively. However, the ABC system outlined products cost exclude certain manufacturing expenses while incorporating some non-manufacturing costs. While it's feasible to adjust ABC data at the end of the peri periods to align with the GAAP, this is necessities additional effort to initial deviation in cost categorization. Furthermore, ABC costing is not accepted by GAAP because this is only prepared for their internal use and for decision making in product costing and it is not aligned in all manufacturing costs, especially fixed overhead, overhead to products. So, ABC costing is dili siya accepted by the GAAP is it because GAAP is only prepared for internal use. But, it is possible that ABC to be adjusted in order na makonform siya to GAAP. However, it requires further effort and more work to be done to be aligned with the GAAP. Fourth, um, auditors are likely to be uncomfortable with allocations that are based on interviews with the company's personnel. So, such subjective data can be easily manipulated by management to make earnings and other key variables look more favorable. Um, the discomfort arises because subjective data obtained through interviews can be manipulated by the management to present financial figures such as earnings and other critical variables in a more favorable light. In essence, it raises doubts about the reliability and objectivity of information derived from such interviews in the auditing process. Due to the concerns mentioned earlier, most companies choose to limit their implementation of activity-based costing for the ABC to specific studies intended for internal management use. So, uh, as mentioned earlier, there are four concerns. So, they opt not to fully integrate ABC into their, into their formal cost accounting systems. So, um, this decision may stem from the challenges and potential drawbacks associated with ABC, prompting companies to use it selectively for particular analysis rather than incorporating it as a standard practice in their broader accounting systems. Here are the reporters of the limitations of ABC, Mr. Eric Villaforte, Mr. Michael Perez, and Mr. Anthony Bacareza. Limitations of activity-based costing. Implementing activity-based costing, a way of accurately tracking cost, is like taking on a big project that needs a lot of time and resources. It helps understand the real cost of making things. While it improves accuracy, keeping it going can be tricky, and there might be clashes with the old way of figuring out cost. Here's an example. Thinking of a toy company deciding to use activity-based costing to know exactly how much it costs to make each toy. At first, they need to hire experts, get new computer programs, and train everyone. ABC gives them more accurate cost details for making toys, but it's not always easy to keep it up and running. Plus, it can cause disagreements since the new cost may not match what they were used to, to with the old way of calculating. Cost and resources. Implementing activity-based costing is a significant task that demands a considerable amount of resources. Once in place, the maintenance costs associated with ABC tend to be higher compared to traditional costing systems. This is primarily due to the need for regular collection, validation, and entry of activity measures which contribute to ongoing expenses. Example, imagine a pizza place deciding to use activity-based costing to know exactly how much it costs to make each type of pizza. At first, they spend a lot on new tools and training for the staff. Activity-based costing helps them know the cost better, but keeping it working means regularly checking and confirming details about make making pizzas, which can end up costing more than the simpler way they used to do it. Resistance to change. ABC challenges established norms and produces conflicting numbers. Resistance to change is natural, emphasizing the need for the top management to support an active participation. Take for example, activity-based costing like a new way to bake cookies. 
people might hesitate because they're used to the old recipe, it's natural. But if the boss supports the change, it helps everyone get on board. Operational challenges. Managers may insist on fully allocating all costs in ABC systems. This lead to overstated costs, and understated margins, and error in pricing and decision making. Misinterpretation of data. ABC data can be easily misinterpreted. Careful consideration is needed before making decisions based on potentially irrelevant costs. Dual cost systems. Reports from ABC systems may not conform to accounting principles. It means nga activity-based costing emphasizes accuracy but may conflict with the simplicity needed for external financial reports. So to address this organization, they adopt a dual cost system for internally para detailed ang insights and but simple ang methods for external reporting to comply with accounting standards. So ikaduka is organizations may need two cost systems, one for internal use and another for external reports. So ang explanation niya na is ang organization often use dual cost systems methods like activity based costing. First is katong usa for internally precision in decision making and ang usa is for adopting a simplified approach for external accounting standards so this balances detailed accuracy for management with the necessity for simplicity in external dis disclosures so more to sa dual cost system conclusion so there are four conclusions first is abc offers improved accuracy but presents challenges so activity based costing enhances accuracy in cost allocation but presents some challenges so ikaduha success requires top management support active involvement from line managers and accounting staff so sa dire malagi na involvement sa management of support sa managers of sa mga accounting staff so ikatulo careful consideration of relevant cost is essential in decision making so sa dire lagi decision making is requires careful consideration of relevant cost so malang ito kailangan mag careful so ikaupat is organizations must weigh benefits against cost and disruptions before adapting activity based costing last is organizations must weigh benefits against costs and disruptions before adopting activity based costing so weighing benefits against potential disruptions before activity based costings adoption for an informed choice so dapat jud mag nai weigh benefits against costs and disruptions before ka mag adopt sa activity based costing so maraton thank you